people seem to be extremely fascinated by film grain. I mean, I have to admit, I love it as well. But there is this mysticism around grain, like how you can create it, what you can do to achieve the best grain effects. You have plugins, you have everything for it. So I thought it would be nice to just create a video, in fact, a video series, because there will be uh, advanced topics that I will want to cover and might not fit into one video. And so I thought that would be quite nice to address this issue. So that's what we're going to do now. In this first video, I'm definitely going to show you a couple of methods of applying a simple grain to your image. So I think the first thing that I need to mention is when I use grain. Well, I use grain when I need to uh, blend something and sometimes I, you know, brush over certain details and I need to put back the grain just to make it look uh, even with everything, with the surrounding parts of the image. Now, the other, other one is when I need to just finish off a retouch. I just apply a slight grain that kind of brings the whole image together. And, you know, I think the third part is just, you know, stylistic choice, where you apply grain just to make, just to give like a certain feeling to your image. Now, I, as far as I'm concerned, there are, I think, like four methods of applying the grain in Photoshop. The first one would be just to use a plate of grain. Now this is, as you can see, if I zoom in, this is a um, a plate of grain that was shot in a neutral background and scanned and, and it was cleaned up in Photoshop and um, basically that's it. That's what you can do. This is very realistic. This is the original actual grain that you would see on a film stock. So that's quite nice. I think that's from Tmax 400. So that's what we have here. That's the first method. The second method would be just to go into filter and noise and add noise. We're going to talk about that later. Uh, and the third one, filter gallery, grain. It's just a horrible method, so just leave it. Just eliminate it from the list. Just don't think about it. And the fourth one is using an, an external plugin. Now, I'm not much of a fan of plugins, but sometimes for grain, I use plugins because it's just so difficult to achieve a very film-like grain in Photoshop and it's just so much quicker to just use a plugin. Now the main reason I'm not recommending you using plugins is because if you use a plugin, uh, first you will be dependent on that, so if you use a different computer where you don't have it installed that's going to cause you problems, but the uh, main issue with that is it's destructive and you need to aim for non-destructive methods, okay? But that's really important. So because it's destructive, we're not going to talk about that. But what we are going to talk about is the plate one. So what you do with the plate is you just grab it, you copy and paste it, and now you need to find a way to make it translucent so the gray part's invisible. And you can do that through going into blending modes and switching it to soft light. Now what soft light does is that it makes everything that's 50% gray basically invisible, okay? Anything that's darker or brighter than that will be uh, brightening or darkening our images without actually um, affecting saturation and hue too much. Because if I were to use overlay, you can see that really accentuates the effect. Sometimes they're good, but it also saturates certain parts of the image. And I don't really want that. I want something quite neutral. So soft light it is. Now if I turn on and off my grain uh, plate, that you can see that it's darkening and brightening the image. Pretty. Uh, you know, this is not pretty, is what I want to say. But what you need to do is kind of neutralize it. And the way you neutralize it is because is, um, is the following. You go into image, adjustment, and levels. Now, you remember I mentioned to you that soft light works by making everything 50% invisible. So in order to make the gray part of the image 50% gray, what I need to do is move my mid-tone slider underneath the middle of my uh, curve here. So that's about there, and then I'm going to hit OK. Now if I turn it on and off again, you can see that it's sort of nothing is happening because it's just applying the grain. Let me zoom in, so on and off, and you can see that 
the t tonality of the image is not changing, but we apply the grain, right? So this is one method. Okay, so the second method would be to add noise and um, do with that. So let me delete this and let's go into filter, noise and add noise. Now let's just talk about it. So the first uh, section is the amount. Obviously it goes without saying, it just varies the amount and the density of noise. Now the distribution is quite uh, peculiar. I don't think you would ever need to use uniform. What uniform does is that it randomly places um, kind of like zeros and ones. So some grains are darkening it by, let's say, the value of one, and other grains are lightening, are lighter by the value of one. So in that, you can understand that the t tonality of the grain is not really changing. So it's, it's always like one or zero. So it's always like darkening one value or lightening one value. And that's not good. You, you know, you really need a variation in, in granula granularity. So the grain particles need to be uh, varied. And in order to achieve that, go to Gaussian. Now, Gaussian is changing the brightening and darkening of it by quite a bit, so it's a random value. So, Gaussian it is. And then the very important part is to put it on monochromatic, because if I don't do that, you get this uh, old uh, tally kind of a feeling, like almost like JPEG artifacts. And you don't want that, you need monochromatic. But if I hit OK now, it's a destructive method as well. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to hit cancel and so and uh, teach you how to do it in a non-destructive way. But first, because I want to accentuate the stylistic choice of a grain, I'm going to make this image black and white just for the heck of it. Let's just go in, choose the black and white, one more contrast. I'm, I'm, I'm using gradient map by the way, but you can do whatever you want. And just keep in mind, the add noise does not have to be put on a black and white. I'm just making it black and white just to give a bit more interest to this. Okay, so now that we have a black and white, I want to apply my grain by using add noise. And to make it non-destructive, what I want to do is to create an empty layer and then hit Shift plus F5 or go into Edit Fill and just put it on 50% and to do the same thing. And then there you go. So now we have 50%. Now if I put the blending mode on soft light, you will see that it's invisible. So turning it on and off will do nothing because essentially that layer is invisible now. So let's just put uh, some sort of noise on it. So noise, add noise. And you can see that it shows up and it's translucent already because we have it on soft light. So I think that's a really good method to basically see what you want to apply here. Now Gaussian is really important, monochromatic is important, and now the, the amount would be quite important. My prob problem with this is that the amount will only change the amount. It will not change the size of the uh, grain. But sometimes you need to vary it to get a convincing result or a very organic result. But first, let's just hit OK on 10% because I like it. But if I zoom out, you can see that it's almost like I, I never applied anything to it. So I want something, you know, more. I want something more prominent on this image for this method. And the way I achieve that is let's just leave this grain uh, layer. Let's just call it grain small. And let's just duplicate that. I'm going to duplicate that by hitting Command plus J or Control plus J. And now I have a copy of it. Um, and with the copy, I'm going to say grain um, mid. Now with that, I will go up into edit, free transform, and then I'm going to lock the width and height and put it on 150%. And let's just apply it. Okay, so now you can see that I have bigger grain as well as the smaller ones. So let's just, we think let's do one more layer here. 
So duplicating it, control plus J, and then I'm just going to rename it to grain uh, large and go into uh, edit, free transform, lock it, and 150%. So I'm just making it bigger. So now I have three layers of grain on my image and they are playing off of each other. And I think it's just so nice and it gives a, a much more organic look to the image. And I can just simply, you know, group it and say that that's the grain. And if you want, we can see the before and after. So this was the after and this is the before. This is the after, this is the before. Let's zoom in a bit. And oh, after, before. Oh, this is the after, yes. <laughs> Okay, so, but you get it. So by layering these certain grains, these certain noise layers, you get a much more organic look and something that you can control uh, just as well. Because if I just uh, expand this, I can go and say, well, I don't want the mid size to be that prominent and I can just lower it to 50%. Maybe I don't want the large to be as prominent and I want it to be 70%, right? So I have this control over my grain that I, I, you know, I didn't have with, with just one single layer. Now you can do the same with the plate method and with other methods as well. I just wanted to show it uh, on the add noise method, but bas basically this is what you do. And this is quite non-destructive because if I were to take the uh, black and white gradient map away, you will be left with the actual color layer and nothing uh, would change in the sense of the grain right so that's non-destructive for you so that's nice that's what you would do now grain is not just that grain is much more complex than just uh, a couple of layers but i'm going to talk about that in the next part which will come out quite shortly so thank you for watching and i hope that you learned something and you know if you're excited about grain i think this is this is exciting so use choose your method Use it, learn it, and I will see you in the next video.